Well, good evening, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report without you guys, as well as you ladies. You know that this literally does not work. You know, um, they had the Hall of Fame cutdowns to 15, and DeMarcus Ware, no surprise, first ballot, first time on the ballot being eligible, has been cut down, of course, to the top 15. Shout out to him. I think that he definitely deserves to go in as a first ballot, uh, without a doubt. But sadly, this is one that mystifies me, is Darren Woodson is not in the top 15. In fact, Darren Woodson, he's not in the Hall of Fame. What we're talking about here is when you think about the Dallas Cowboys and you think about all of the great players that have gone through and played for the Dallas Cowboys, all of the Hall of Famers that are there, there's one guy who has the most tackles. The most tackles and has three rings, and dare I say the best safety the Cowboys have had since the 90s, and that's Darren Woodson. <clears throat> for whatever reason, Darren Woodson, maybe it's because the Cowboys <clears throat> have an embarrassment of riches of from that Super Bowl era, already having Charles Haley, having Larry Allen, Troy Aikman, Emma Smith, Michael Irving, that they're saying, you got to wait a bit because we can't just keep throwing Cowboy player after Cowboy player in there. But thinking about Woodson, Woodson should have already been there, as well as, oh, my God, Emerson Walls. As we sit here with Diggs, who has tied Emerson Walls' record of 11, and understand that nobody has had 11 interceptions since Emerson Walls. The fact that that guy isn't in there is a disgrace as well. Now, of course, I'm going to be a homer, and of course, I'm going to want my Cowboys and things to be in there. And the Cowboys, let's face it, we have a lot of players in there. And I'm sure with the amount of hate that the Cowboys get that, you know, it's hard to get them to go ahead and, you know, look, look out for the Cowboys. I mean, we see how long it took for Drew Pearson to get in there. So we have to understand that, well, you know, you're getting a little shade thrown at you. But that's two Cowboys that definitely deserve to be in there, to at least be finalist um, for the Hall of Fame. We'll find out the night before the Super Bowl who's actually going to be inducted into that class, and hopefully DeMarcus Ware is one of those. But definitely Darren Woodson, boy, they, they're really missing out on him because he was great. And that's where the Cowboys, when you think about our defense – we won those three Super Bowls, not just because of Troy Aikman, Emma Smith, Michael Urban, and Larry Allen. We won those because of that number one defense that is unheralded and to only have one guy in there off of that defense, that was great. That was number one in the NFL. Like I said, it is a disgrace. Now, the Cowboys of this era, they're working on building their own legacy as well. I don't know if we're going to call this the doomsday um Back in action, the Doomsday 3.0. I don't know what we're going to call it. Animal Planet, when animals attack. I don't know. Maybe that, that should be it, when animals attack. Because, of course, Micah Parsons loves himself some animals. And they definitely are attacking. They are attacking so well. That they have 33 takeaways in the NFL, which leads them. And here's the thing that, that's crazy about this defense. <sighs> When you look at the numbers, you know, you, the numbers and the statistics are based on the full season. But let's say the defense that faced Tampa Bay is not the defense that we have right now. Micah Parsons, first game. Randy Gregory didn't play. He ended up being out with COVID. Week two, we lose D-Law for the next eight games. We ended up having a mismatch of players that had never played a game before together. We saw Jalen Smith on the team. Whereas we ended up getting guys like Navelle Gallimore didn't play. Tristan Hill didn't play. Micah Parsons, babe in the woods. Fast forward to now, 
week number 17. The Cowboys have Novell Gallimore back. They have Tristan Hill back. They have a well-seasoned baby Lawrence Taylor, the Lion King, in Micah Parsons. They have the Eagle and Trayvon Diggs. And I want you to, I, I want to give you something that, that literally blows my mind away here. Diggs with 11 interceptions here. It's, in, it's insane. When you think of Richard Sermon, the best two seasons Richard Sermon had, he had eight. Understand, nobody's had 11 since Everson Walls. 2020, the team, the Dallas Cowboys, had 10 interceptions. In 2019, we had seven. 2018, we had nine. 2017, we had 10. 2016, we had nine. 2015, we had eight. The last time the Dallas Cowboys as a team had more interceptions than Trayvon Diggs was 2014. And on that season, which we were second in the NFL taking the football away, we had uh, 18. We got 25 right now. And defense, regardless of what they say, forget what you're hearing with the talking heads, that it's all offense, offense, offense. You know, offense puts the fans in the stands. Chicks dig the deep ball. But defenses and running games win championships. And as we go through and we look at the past, you know, Dallas Cowboys teams, the last time we had a defense anywhere close to this was 2007. 2014, our defense was second in taking the football away, but they were like 19th in yardage. Now, here's the thing. As I was saying, we can take the scoring defense that we have on the season to say it's seventh in the NFL. But for the last four games, the Dallas – and I know we've been playing, you know, our divisions, which, you know, most of them are ass, but they're averaging giving up only 14.3 points per game. 14.3 points a game. And now, for the first time, the last four weeks, they have their whole defensive line together. You know, we either had, you know, Demarcus Lawrence without Randy Gregory, or we had Randy Gregory without Demarcus Lawrence and Micah Parsons, and then we had just Micah Parsons. And then finally, you know, of course, we had OC and we had Carlos Watkins, but now you've got Tristan Hill and Navelle Gallimore that are all into that mix now as well. You now have that pass rush together, which has been ferocious and literally causing havoc. And so when you look at it, you got the first half of the season and you got kind of now two different defenses. But that defense getting together, I think, can lead them a long ways. I was watching Get Up this morning and listening to – uh this section, which was interesting, because the question was, can the Cowboys defense carry them into the playoffs? Okay. And I want to, I want to listen to this real quick and tell me what you guys think on this. Carry them, not just far in the playoffs, but to the Super Bowl. Yeah, I, I think it can, Ryan, because look, I, I think they play on that side of the ball. If you want to talk about complementary within a, an individual unit, they play a nice brand of complementary football on the defensive side, meaning front and coverage go together. They feast off of each other. They play off of one another. We know that disruption is really what leads to production on defense, and especially up front. They're very disruptive up front. And look, Trayvon Diggs, there's no question the people in the back end, they benefit from that because you're mm -hmm. having quarterbacks who are right now bringing their eyes down, wondering where the rush is coming from. Balls are getting batted. Balls are coming out too fast. Aaron throws are happening. Tips and overthrows are, are presenting themselves. Trayvon has feasted off of that thing. The whole defense has feasted off of one another. So I think that is the kind of defense that ultimately winds up carrying football teams if they need to and gets teams to Super Bowls and gives them a chance to win is when they know that the front end and the back end are married together. And this team right now, coordinated by Dan Quinn, is as good as any at playing that style, that brand mm. of football. 
how far has this defense come based on where they were last year? And we were talking about them like they were the worst in the league, and they, frankly, they were. What do you think? Can they carry them to the Super Bowl? Once again, Lewis, at the beginning of the season, I said the easiest thing to fix is defense because it's about ex about uh, execution is about tenacity and speed, and this this Dallas defense has tremendous speed, and they have guys that can win the one-on-one -on -one <laughs> battles. And Parson has been one of the best rookies on the defensive side of football that we've seen in a long time. You know, but I don't think they they can't make that mistake of thinking that Diggs is like some Revis Island thing because he is a gambler, right? So you have to make sure that everything is tied in, but you have to be strategic and when you're going with your one-on-ones. It's going to be interesting against this uh, Cardinals um, offense. If Kyler Murray can buy time with his legs, can they continue to plaster downfield? And do, are they going to get slowed down? I, I want to see a team make Michael Parsons the center of attention and make a game plan to run the ball at him and make him have to handle the physical game. Because if you run away from him, he's too athletic and too gifted to be able to, to, to run away from him. He'll make plays from behind uh, uh, all day. So you want to see more from this team in this game mm -hmm. this weekend and see how this defense really I'll, performs. I guess an outfit that could be multiple. Woody, what do you think about this defense, and what will this weekend's matchup against the Cardinals tell you about their ability to carry the Cowboys all the way to the promised land? Well, listen, when I, when I watch the Cowboys defense, the first thing that jumps out is the speed. Mm -hmm. The speed that, at which they play That's the defense. physical. It just really smothers an offense. And when you, you know, when you're talking about, you know, all the different pass rushers that they have on that side of the ball, you know, the Randy Gregory's, uh, you know, Demarcus Lawrence and, and, and Michael Parsons, man, it's just, it's almost like pick your poison. Who do you, who are you going to take away? <laughs> because you can't take away all of them. You and can't. Someone's going to get free. And we know that rush and cover, you know, they, they're, you know, they're intertwined together, and that's what makes, you know, really good defenses. So, you know, when I look at them against the Arizona Cardinals, I think obviously objective number one is to keep Kyler Murray contained because Bart pointed out, you know, Kyler Murray is the type of guy, he gets out of the pocket, outside the pocket. He's, you know, one of the most accurate downfield passes there is in the National Football League. Keeping him contained with those athletes is going to be job number one and they have this they have the speed to keep up with Kyler Murray on that side of the ball what do you think yeah no I, I think speed is going to be a gigantic factor but you know yeah. we we see a lot of times during the NFL season head coaches get rid of coordinators right we saw the Giants do we saw the Panthers do it on the yeah. offensive side of the ball I think I give a lot of credit to Mike McCarthy for moving on from Mike Nolan and oh, God, yes. in here who's absolutely transformed this defense I can't remember the last time I've seen a coordinator come in and make such a significant difference and, and yes look he's got the players he does he this roster and any DC in the league right now would be salad elevating over a defense that looks like this Cowboys team. But to be able to make that switch, recognize that there is an issue here in the play calling and, and, and help and, and find Dan Quinn and believe in Dan Quinn, who didn't end his time in Atlanta very well. Uh, to be able to do that and him to have this sort of resurgence now as we're hearing yeah. Dan Quinn's name getting passed around here for head coaching uh, candidate op opportunities after just one season it, with it was, Dallas making these improvements. It was, it was um. Yeah, I, I hear what she's saying, that teams are salivating over what the Cowboys have in personnel now. But let's be honest here. Going into the season, when you looked at the Dallas Cowboys defense, you said, well, Randy Gregory's pretty good. You know, but Randy Gregory only had like nine sacks going into the season. You said, D-Law, you know, he's been a good you know, a run stopper, but, you know, Six and a half sacks last year, five the year before. You know, he wasn't Khalil Mack. You had Jalen Smith and Leighton Van Der Esch. Van Der Esch couldn't stay healthy. Jalen Smith, you know, usually would get carried down the field um, on tackles. And, you know, Diggs was okay as a rookie. You know, he had four interceptions, but he was still just a second-year player. And then there was Jordan Lewis and safety. Well, Donovan Wilson played pretty good the year before. Um but then we started getting guys like Keanu O'Neal, who was a safety that we talked about being a linebacker, and Malik Hooker coming back from an Achilles tendon. These people that are now talking about all the great players that are there, they, nobody thought that we had great players and talent going into the season. You guys didn't think that we had great talent and players going into the season. Nobody thought we did. Yeah, we said Micah Parsons, you know, he's a good pick. Nobody expected him to be baby Lawrence Taylor. 
nobody expected for Randy Gregory to start really taking that big step like he has, or or some of the pieces like Carlos Watkins, who was a role player with the Texans, to be able to come out here and do that. Nobody expected a rookie like O.C. to come out and play as well as he did. Nobody expected us to release Jalen Smith and turn around and you know just get better. That was Dan Quinn in this defense. Uh, you know, his defensive schemes and his teaching and his ability to do that. Let's be clear on this. Nobody went around and said, I want that guy, because most of these guys signed for like a million-dollar one-year deal. These were bottom basement players that they took and made this into a great defense. Uh, the thing I meant to do um, earlier, and I forgot to do it, was to look at the Seattle Seahawks defense from the time Dan Quinn left, what happened? Where, where did their numbers go? Because, you know, you could directly correlate that Seattle Seahawks defense going from being the best in football with Dan Quinn, him leaving to go to Atlanta, and where they are now, which is horrendous. Final thought before I get out of here is I wanted to actually take a look at the injury report. And if you are the Cardinals, looking at this, you need a mash unit. You've got your defensive uh, lineman, Zach Allen, did not practice. Buda Baker was limited. Kevin Beecham did not practice. James Conner did not practice. Demetrius Harris did not practice. Rod C. Hunts Hudson, offensive lineman, uh, was limited. Rondé Moore was limited. Jordan Phillips did not practice. Marco Wilson did not practice. Chase Edmonds was limited um, with a back. Uh, Zach Ertz, well, he was full participant, and so on. For the Cowboys, the only person we had that did not practice was Quentin Bohannon, and that was due to an illness. Demarcus Lormans was limited but expected to play. Tyron Smith was limited but looks like he's going to play. Malik Turner, Zeke Elliott, Tony Pollard, everybody is a, a full go. And add to that, we got jo uh, Jordan Lewis back off of the COVID list. The Cowboys are healthier now than they've been all season long. And that's freaking amazing at this time of year. And I don't know of any team that is in the same shape that they are. So with that being said, we've done uh, spent enough time here on the YouTube. Um, shout out to, of course, DeMarcus Ware um, being a finalist for the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Hopefully in the very near future, we'll see Darren Woodson as well as Everson Walls in there in the Hall of Fame. Just remember one thing, guys. You got to make sure that you play to win the game. You play to win the game. Hello? You play to win the game. You don't play to just play it. That's the great thing about sports. You play to win. And I don't care if you don't have any wins. You go play to win. When you start telling me it doesn't matter, then retire. Get out. Because it matters.